Right everyone, it's review time. I know it has been a while since I last did a review because there has been a hiatus with these review videos. There are reasons for that but I'm not going to get down that road because I don't really want to drown on and on and on about those things in this video. But there is something I do want to talk about before I get into the review. Which by all means if you want to you can skip this part of the video but what I want to talk about is concerning this review and future reviews I'll do. Now the last several reviews I've been doing has been a combination of pictures, video footage and microphone recorded dialogue thrown together in one video. Now when it comes to exporting and uploading them the new format of reviews has taken quicker to export and upload than it has done with the previous format because they took longer to export and a tad longer to upload. However, the new format of reviews has taken longer to edit because in the case of just having video footage on a computer document, all you simply have to do is just simply edit all the footage together and there you go you can export the video. But in the case with the new format of reviews I've been doing, because it's been video footage and pictures with audio recorded dialogue, it's not a case of you can simply all edit it together at once. It has to be edited bit by bit in order as well to put the audio recorded dialogue in where it's suitable. And that has been a bit time consuming to do to be honest with you. Especially because when it came to recording those videos I always went into a quiet room because I do live in this house with my family and so I've always gone into a different room so I didn't have any background noises and whatever in the videos. But you know even that was a pig to do just to simply move the laptop into another room, set it up and then move it back into that room again and set it up again. So they have been time consuming and a bit of a pain in the backside to do. So what I've decided to do is that I'm going to have a slight change with how I do these reviews. It's still going to be very much mostly the same as I've done with the last several review videos. You're still going to see close-ups of the various bits of details on the models, etc. It's just that it's not going to be a combination of videos, pictures and audio recorded dialogue. It's all going to be filmed on camera. So there's not going to be a single picture or bit of audio recorded dialogue anywhere in these review videos. Because personally I think this will be a better way to do it. And it will be easier as well and it will save time. But anyway, with that said and done, let's crack on with today's review. Right, so in today's review, we're going to be having a look at a model made by a manufacturer that I've never bought from before, let alone reviewed. And it is Oxford Rail, as you can clearly see, no prizes for guessing that. And the model we're looking at today is the all-new Oxford Rail Dean Goods. Now, at the time of filming this video and uploading it, only one of the Oxford Rail Dean Goods has been released. This one I have here is in the GWR Lime Green livery. There are other liveries too. There's BR Black with the early emblem. There's GWR Unlime Green. There's a GWR Unlime Green version with a snowplow. And there's also the preserved example, which is in GWR Unlime Green as well, which is exclusive to locomotion models. But those models have not been released yet, at least at the time when I'm filming this video and uploading it, because you may be watching this review at a time when those models have been released, but at this point they have not. This is the only model that's been released. Now these models were first announced by Oxford Rail last year and during that year I got the privilege of seeing the pre-production samples of these models on display at Worley, which I'm sure by now you'll all be aware of if you've seen the video I've uploaded to the channel and the pictures I've uploaded on the internet. Now, I was unsure at first if I was going to get the Dean Goods, but then when I saw them on display at Worley, I just had to have one, and I've been looking forward to them since last year. The version I've gone for is the GWR Lime Green version. 
which in my opinion I think it's one of the nicest liveries that you can get this model in. There's nothing wrong with any of the others but the reason I've gone for this one is because when it comes to GWR locomotives most of them I have in GWR livery are in the unlined version. There are a few I have in the GWR lime green but not many and so that's the reason why I've gone for a lime green version. But the GWR online green version does look nice, but I just wanted the line green version. Now I should point out at this point that originally that this review was not going to be a review on the Dean Goods. Originally it was supposed to have been a review on the Batman Patriot, but I wasn't satisfied with that model because it struggled to pull anything. In fact it could barely pull itself, never mind anything else. So I sent the model back and so I then got an Oxford Rail Dean Goods. Now I didn't get one of these models straight away. One of, those re one of those reasons being is because I had heard a few horror stories and so I had a few doubts in my mind and I was then unsure about whether I was going to get one or not which led to me buying the Patriot which I wasn't satisfied with and then sent it back and got a refund. But then afterwards I learned that you know we can all be unlucky sometimes with models. I've had my fair share of unluckiness. And so I didn't really want to let that put me off in getting one. Because I didn't really want to not get one of these models if you know what I'm saying. Because I have been looking forward to these for ages. And this livery is such a stunning livery. And I can safely say that I have already tested this model. Because when I got back home the other day and found this waiting for me. The first thing I did was open the model, well, open up the box and put the model on the track and gave it a small test run and it does run beautifully as you shall see in this review. Well enough about all this chit chat, let's get on with the review. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to unbox the model. So this is the usual typical standard packaging that we're all getting now with most manufacturers. Very Hornby and Helgen and Batman-esque. So this is the box sleeve that we get for the model. There's no brief history on the back other than a warning about how this model is not suitable for children in several different languages. But it is a very nice box sleeve and I do like the colour of it as well. So I'll put that to one side then we take out the plastic packaging out of the card tray. I call it a card tray because it is made out of card. Then we put that to one side and we can now look at the instructions that we get with the model. So first of all on the front you get some brief history of the Dean Goods and a photograph of the model. On the back, hints and tips such as your locomotive will not run and it gives you a list of reasons why it may not run and all that. Locomotive body maintenance, television suppression and track cleaning and important safety notes. And then inside, we've got pretty much the stuff that we're used to seeing. Fitting the brake rods and couplings. Running in period, which is basically lubrication. It shows you where to lubricate it. The locomotive tender drawbar adjustment, if you want to adjust it. And remove of the locomotive body to put a DCC decoder in. Although in this case it's actually the tender body that you remove, not the locomotive body. But there we go. And that's pretty much it. So I'll put that to one side and I will put that in my folder of instructions later on, which I do keep them all in a folder. Next we remove the outer plastic sleeve. One thing 
I'm sure you can all notice at this point is that the box flap here has got a bit bent so the clip to the box that holds the top on isn't quite stuck on firmly but there we go but you know it's just the packaging after all which I'm not too worried about to be honest but we now come on to the detail pack which is in this resealable bag so in this bag of detail parts we get a brake rod for the locomotive a spare slim tension lock coupling if you wish to use it on the front of the locomotive I won't be using it for the front of the locomotive but you can if you want to and it's nice that they've included this in the little detail pack we've got this little curious piece of plastic that I've got no idea what it's for looks like a washout plug or something but I have no idea but it's there in the little pack anyway we also get a vacuum pipe which I do like how part of it has actually been painted in a nice gold colour that really does bring out the detail on it we also get these dummy coupling hooks with these screw link couplings moulded on them now you can add these on the model if you want but bearing in mind as this locomotive already has coupling hooks you'd have to remove those and put these in I will not be using these on the model but one thing you can do is you can use them on other models as well and not just locomotives you can use them on rolling stock as well which is a nice little thing to do there so I'll show you that for things like that so you don't necessarily have to use these parts in particular for this model and last but not least we get these silver chain link couplings which they are chain link couplings because there's no screw link on them and I do love that they've been painted silver really it's quite nice and I shall definitely be using these on the model and so these are a great bit of detail to have well with the detail parts now covered we can now finish off the unboxing part of this review now I should point out that the local and the tender are both connected together so when you lift this model out of the packaging you must lift both the tender and the locomotive out together like so then we put the rest of the package into one side and now we are free to have a look at the model in detail now before we do talk about the detail we're going to talk about the weight first and this model is quite heavy there's quite a bit of weight in both the loco and the tender which will give this model plenty of traction so there shouldn't be any traction troubles when it comes to pulling stock around the lights because weight is important when it comes to models it's very crucial because without the weight this model will not be able to pull anything another thing before I do go into the detail I just want to point out the Oxford Rail have made several adjustments to this model so some of the issues that this model had have been rectified now we come on to the detail so first of all we have sprung metal buffers as you can see now I don't have much care for sprung buffers personally because you're only going to mess about with the sprung buffers when you're holding the model you're never going to mess about with them when the model is running and to be quite honest I do find sprung buffers rather pointless to be honest with you for that reason but if you do like sprung buffers then this model will certainly keep you happy if you like sprung buffers that is I don't have much care for them but that's just my own opinion moving on to the buffer beam we have quite a lot of rivet detail we also have the locomotive's running number 2309 crisply printed on the front there we also have a very nice red trim around the front of the buffer beam and also we have a very nice separately fitted brake pipe which as you can see the bottom bit actually runs underneath the buffer beam as if 
the brake pipe is connected to something. Very nice bit of detail that, to see on the model. We also get a coupling hook on the buffer beam which is painted silver. Very nice bit of detail to have. We also have a coupling storage hook on the buffer beam there. Just by the buffer. And that is a great bit of detail to have because the chain link couplings that you get in the detail bag, you can actually rest the chain link coupling on that. Which is what they use it for in real life. So that is actually a nice little bit of detail to have on models like this. And when you link loop the chain link coupling over that little hook, it will look very nice. We have of course a NEM socket, so you can put a tension lock coupling in there if you want to, or a KD coupling, or any coupling of your own sort. And also we do have some guard irons there, just under the buffer beam, which is very nice to see. We also have some separately fitted lamp irons as well, which again, very nice bit of detail to have, and it makes the model look all the more realistic. Moving on to the smoke box door, which we do have quite a bit of detail on, which includes a separately fitted lamp iron above the smoke box door, separately fitted smoke box door darts, which are painted, as well as smoke box door hinges. This little bit of detail, which I am not 100% certain what it's there for, but it looks very nice. And we also have a couple of rivet rivets there as well, as you can see. And we also have some rivet detail under the smoke box door as well. We have some very nice detail on the sand boxes. I just love how the middle bit is painted green, just like the locomotive, and you've got the very nice fine lining around that. It just looks stunning. We also have a very nice chimney, which you could put a smoke generator unit in there if you want to, but that's not my thing, so I'm not going to bother. But it does look very nice. We also have lots of rivets on the smoke box, as you can see. We also have a top feed dome on the boiler which is separately fitted and it's a very nice bit of detail to have. We also have a very nice painted gold dome there which just looks so stunning and this is correct because the Dean Goods in this livery did have a gold dome and it looks very nice and it really does lift the livery in my opinion. We also have the typical GWR style safety valve which is painted and it looks really nice and on the cab roof we have turned metal whistles which look very nice and add a bit of bling to the model as well. We also have some rivet detail on the wheel arches as you can see and some very nice fine lining on them which looks very nice. We also have some rivet detail on the running board and we also have a separately fitted small handrail there in between these two wheel arches. We also have some visible daylights under the boiler. Now one thing that you can see is that just under the boiler there where the daylight is, that part is painted black. Now in essence that part you could argue should be painted green and it would have been nice if it would have but to be honest with you, from a certain angle it is actually a bit hard to see it. Not to mention it doesn't really matter too much anyway to be honest given where it's been positioned so it doesn't look too bad in my opinion. So. It's something that you could paint yourself if you wanted to, but it's not something I'm going to bother with, to be honest with you. Because it doesn't look too bad, and to be honest with you, after a while you sort of won't notice it, especially when the model is running around the layout. We do have a very nice separately fitted metal handrail running along the model, and up above the smoke box door there, which the separately fitted handrail is all painted green. Now up to the smoke box here it should not be painted green, it should be painted black. So that is something that I will rectify myself. It does look nice though, having said that, with the handrail all green, but it would be a slight improvement to have the handrail where the smoke box is painted black. But even so, it is a very nice piece of detail. We also have some very nice detail on the firebox, which presumably they are washout plugs and they look very nice. And as we'd expect, we've got glazing in the front cab windows. 
Moving on to the cab roof, we have some nice rivet detail there, as you can see. On the cab sides, we have some beautiful crisp lining and the locomotive's running number, 2309, which is a typical GWR-styled number plate there on the cab. They're not etched, they are moulded plastic, but they still look very nice. I will give it that. And the detail on them, it looks superb. We also have some separately fitted handrails there on the back of the cab. And they're painted as well, so they look nice. We also have a very nice foot plate there in between the lock and the tender, and it is a foldable one, as you can see. So it does look very nice. The cab floor is also painted, which is a nice touch. And something we can't leave out is the painted cab interior. That just looks superb. You've got the regulator, the lever, the gauges and the dials and all the pipe work in there. It's all painted and it looks just like the real thing and it looks fantastic, as I'm sure you'll all agree. We also have some pipe work running on the running plate of the loco, which is very nice and it's separately fitted as well. On the rear cab footstep, we have some rivet detail and some fine lining, which looks superb. We've also got a very nice, fine, separately fitted brake rod there. On the locomotive it looks very nice and there's also some fine lining on the running plate and some nice rivet detail as well as well as the middle footstep there again nice fine lining and rivet detail on that and there is some rivet detail on the frames of the loco as well and another thing that I've loved that they've captured are the brake shoes as well just look at that that looks superb and we certainly can't leave out the side rods as well I can't wait to see all those moving on the model just like as you do on the real thing, and that's always a pleasure to see. Moving on to the tender now, which to make a start, it has some very nice, beautiful fine lining on it, as you can see. We have a couple of rivets on top of the tender. On the face plate of the tender, we have some very nice detail. We have the handles there, which are painted, and they are there for to transfer the water from the tender to the boiler. A couple of storage cabinets and a fire iron holder there as well, which looks very nice. We also have the footsteps on the tender, which have some very nice rivet detail on them and some fine lining. And there's also fine lining on the frames of the tender as well. We also have axle boxes and springs on the tender as well. And you can just about see there that we have a water scoop as well. Very nice little bit of detail, even though most of the time you're not going to really notice it, especially when the model is running on the layout, but it's still a nice little bit of detail to have, though, don't get me wrong. On the front of the tender, we have some very nice painted, separately fitted handrails, which look very nice. On the back of the tender, we have separately fitted handrails, and they're painted as well, which is very nice. On the back of the tender, you have some steps there, either side of where the lining is, on the sides there, as you can see which they are for the crew to climb up on top of the tender. We also have separately fitted lamp irons and also in the middle of the tender we have a builder's plate. And just look on the front there is a small coupling storage hook there just by the buffer. Again we have nice rivet detail on the buffer beam, a separately fitted brake pipe and a dummy coupling hook and painted silver like the front one. And of course we have a NEM coupling and just like on the loco, the buffers on the tender are metal and they are indeed sprung. On top of the tender you have a nice water filler cap. It doesn't open but then we shouldn't expect it to because if it did it would probably make the model more expensive. But it's a nice bit of detail to have anyway. Now the coal in the tender is not removable, it's just a plastic moulded coal load. But then again it doesn't really matter because I shall be just scattering my own coal load on top of it which is what you can do. Now the livery is absolutely beautiful. It's very nice and finely painted. There's no errors in the paintwork that I can see. At least anything major, for that matter. No errors in the paintwork. It's all very nice and finely applied. And the shade of green is accurate as well. And the lining, it's just so crisply done and it's just beautiful. And it really does lift the livery in my opinion. We've also got the Great Western font crisply printed on the tender. It's the correct font and very crisply done as well and it's beautiful text. I will give it that. 
And of course we have the old style Great Western logo in the middle there, also crispy printed and just look at the detail on that. That just looks stunning. And on the other side of the logo it's pretty much the same but with only a couple of detail differences. On this side of the model, behind the second wheel splasher, we have a reversing lever. And the pipe work on this side of the model that runs alongside the running plate, instead of running all the way up to there at the end of the cab, it finishes here, just in front of the third rear wheel splasher. One thing I very nearly forgot to mention is the rivets on the tender buffer beam and also there are some tender buffers there as well which is obscured by the foot plate on the model and I've only just noticed it myself. We now come on to the running performance of the model and as you can see straight out of the box it runs nice and smooth but it will still need some running in as all new models do and it's running exactly how it should when you first get a model out of the box and run it. No motors burning out or grinding noises. Running nice and smooth. The foot plate did cause a bit of a problem around bend, so I've had to fold it back a bit, but oh well, that's just a little thing. We now come on to the loaded test run for the Dean Goods, and as you can see, we have got the Dean Goods running with most of the wagons on the coal train road. Two of these wagons could not be used because they were triangle wagons and the wheels aren't as freely on them, so they're not exactly the smoothest of runners. But what this does show is that the weight is important. Because without the weight, then this model would not really be able to pull anything. So overall, even though the Dean Goods still has a few errors, it is, I'm sure you all agree, a fantastic little model. And any errors that the model does have, the performance of the model and the detail it already has more than makes up for it. But is this model better than the Oxford Rail Adams radial tank? Well. That I cannot definitively say, because I do not own 
the oxygen rail as it's playing it. But, from what I have seen with the Dean Goods, I can say that I do think it is an improvement from the Adams radio. So overall, I'm going to rate the Oxford Rail Dean Goods a 9 out of 10. This has been Class 47 Peter reviewing the Oxford Rail Dean Goods and I'll see you again soon for the next review which isn't going to be until next month now, sometime. But until then I hope you've enjoyed this review. And I hope you continue to enjoy watching my other reviews as well. And I thank you for watching this video and I'll see you again soon. But until then, take care and look after yourselves and stay safe.